Hey guys, welcome to Currently Cringing. Welcome, Dits. We have a huge recap. You haven't been on in a minute. Yeah, it's been a while. So much has happened that we had like a full season happen. <laughs> the last time we recorded, we didn't even post it because we were both so down in the dumps. And so it wasn't worth posting, even though I think the listeners would love that. But we just don't want to give off that vibe all the time. You know, like there's good times and bad times. And it just wasn't good vibe. So we didn't post it. And then we talked it over ourselves, which was basically like from spring to now. And you can explain, like, where were you at in spring? Well, I recorded uh, at the end of March uh, from a, actually a hotel room uh, in a city where I was visiting a girl. And that girl was meant to be a rebound for my six month relationship. But then I caught feelings and then I got dumped right after that weekend. <laughs> so twice in Q1, I was dumped. That's, and that and, was and, traumatic. Yeah, it just kind of sucked. And it also, it was like, not only was it two dumps in Q1, it was also two straight Easter Sundays where I was dumped. Cause I was, that was the previous year, Blondie, uh, that I mentioned on the pod. Um, same sort of thing happened. It was like the same, like six weeks and like hot and heavy and like, you know, memes and photos and all these declarations of grandeur from the girl's side. And then all of a sudden, you know, changing her mind. And even like it was, it was uncanny because these were both girls that I had a crush on for a while. And I remember like both times I went to a March Madness game in New York, took a photo, sent it to both girls. Both girls like, hey, look, like you're having so much fun. And then within like two or three weeks later, it was over <laughs> on like, Easter Sunday. They made the moves. They were the ones love bombing you. And then poof, they're gone. Yeah. And I think I have to take some lessons where it's like, if someone's love bombing you, don't, don't buy into it. Maybe pull away or I don't know. And we've That's... talked about this as well. I think it's just in our nature. We're too kind and people don't realize that unless they know us because we give off like, these vibes of, you know, we have attitude or whatever, but we're actually the biggest teddy bears. But I thought we've moved past this. I thought we were no longer Simp Nation. I, at least I'm no longer Simp Nation. I've moved leaps and bounds. I don't know if I was simping. I feel like it was, I would always just kind of mirror or play along with what was happening. Like when I was in the city visiting this girl, she took a selfie of us, you know, which we'd never do. That's like, the kiss of Bad death vibes. and she sent it to uh, a mutual friend that actually set us up that is a friend of the show actually and literally it was a joke where it's like you're next i can't believe you did this again and it's like every time the selfie comes out it ends <laughs> we've talked about this before on the podcast this goes back to aditya sending me a photo back in 2020 of 21. 2021 of him and a girl at the time he was seeing and rubbing it in my face that I was next. Meanwhile, I was in your position now, dumped <laughs> back to back to back. And I cried that day. We've discussed this. But then this girl sent a photo to our friend of you and her and said, you're next to our friend who is clearly not doing well and single. And it's like the kiss of death. You don't send anyone photos of anything till you're married. We've discussed this. <laughs> maybe if there's an engagement, I'm not sure. But like, maybe don't send it to the friend. I, I don't know. What's the, uh, the single friend? Like, I don't know what you do there. I think you keep it to yourself and you be mindful. Like, I couldn't stand when people were throwing it in my face that they were in a relationship when they clearly knew I was struggling. Well, the difference is that I wasn't trying to throw in your face. I was trying to motivate you. And it turns out I was right because the next person you hooked up with, you ended up marrying. And I had like, I've had like seven girlfriends since that girl and I'm single. So yeah. So your next has now become a joke. Like your next means you're actually next because I was next. And a peer in the industry who's very famous said that I was next for a comedy special. So from her mouth to God's ears, hope it's true. I sent you the screenshot and the you're next, you know, it's, it's a, 
it means something. But anywho, so we need uh, we need t-shirts. We need Some t-shirts merch. that say you're next for merch. Absolutely. But now then you were kind of down in the dumps because you had to attend these fabulous weddings in Italy. And I relate because I've actually podcasted about this prior in my single days as well, where you feel like everyone else's life is moving on and you're attending these weddings and you're just, again, the single guest. Well, I think after the breakups, I like went to India for a quick business trip. So like I wasn't really thinking about it. But then I came back to New York and I was like, oh man, the reality of the breakup and the other breakup, I had two breakups at once to process. So I kind of threw myself into work as one does. And then New York in April and May was really fun because our winter teams, the Knicks and Rangers were doing well. So every night I had plans to go see friends and I didn't even think about dating. Like I would actually try to schedule dates, but I was like never free. It's like, oh yeah, I have like a free night or a free happy hour. And that was actually a good litmus test to show Girls really, or I guess guys, if you're dating and you're always busy and you only give like little windows of time, the other person will actually respond nicely to it. They're like, oh, like I'll try to fit you in. Like you tell me what's good for your schedule. So that was actually really good because it was like low stakes dating. I never really prioritized. And I was seeing a couple girls actually in New Jersey, which is another, (laughs) I, I never date in New Jersey. I dated a couple girls in New Jersey. You have stated on this podcast that you will not even date past the Upper East Side, and here you are dating in Jersey. Well, I said I'd rather date someone in another city than New Jersey. And what's funny is I was dating someone in another city. I saw these girls in New Jersey for a bit, and then I met a girl in New York who actually lived in San Francisco. Um, And that's pretty far. And actually... Uh, went to visit some friends in San Francisco and then also had some work on the West Coast. But I ended up meeting her in SF as well. And you know, we've talked about how SF is kind of a, a gloomy place right now. SF but even so, for fire, and there's no shade in stating that it's a dumpster fire. I had to perform there a few times. I was terrified. I don't know what's happened to the city and how they let it get to that state. But you, I guess you went there and you had a good time with this girl? I did, yeah. And the, the difference now is that I'm not going to like put a lot of stock. It's like I had a good time. If I see her again, great. If I don't see her again, great. If we end up together, great. If we don't, it's fine. It's just all part of the journey. And like, you know, it's, it's just been nice to get to know someone and get along with her. And, you know, I'm sure we see, we'll try to see each other again this summer. And it's just like I'm having fun dating again, you know, and. The problem is before it felt very high stakes and this feels not low stakes, but say medium, medium stakes. It's good. In your case, why was it high stakes? Because for me, I had my mom every day yelling at me, verbally abusing me, literally. And everyone in the Indian community, the aunties, everybody asking me why I was single. It was all well, I think the reason it was high stakes for the last few is because like um, a bunch of them were girls that I knew like for a while and I liked them for a while and there were like either friends or friends of friends and like one was a family friend so that's like literally four consecutive girls that I like properly dated so it felt you know it felt more realistic um whereas with the dating apps you know I feel like you feel less connected or at least less invested right because you know ultimately you don't really have that many mutual friends and it's just like another person you swiped on you know um so not the dating apps are making a comeback but it is nice to have that pressure taken away but if someone introduces you or it's like you know i had a friend's sister that i was dating like you know that's tough there's a lot for on both ends and when the families get involved it's it's a lot it's especially awkward and i was in that situation for many years which is why i think it ended as well because it's not fun dating someone who everybody knows when it's not going well. Yeah. And maybe that's why it worked well for you and your husband, because it was like a stranger and like out of the community and everything. We always say that date someone who is not in your cesspool. Yeah. Oh my God. That's right. Yeah. I was dating in the cesspool. (laughs) I think you've been dating in the cesspool for a while now. We just happen to be dating people, you know, but it's nice to find someone that doesn't know anybody that you know. And that was the case with my husband, which is why I think it worked. 
yeah and it's funny because like a lot of people that we know who are single they're like oh like i'd love to date a guy like serge and meet him and it's like you're not meeting him because he ain't out there he ain't in the cesspool that you're you have a pond you're fishing in you had to lie about your uh location and he lied about his location and he's not your traditional new york person you just happen to both put new york you know Right. And before him, I was dating people in the cesspool, like someone in New York that knew someone. And it just, it's cringe. It never worked. Rarely. I feel like all, the, all the brown people within five, six years have dated each other. It's kind of crazy. And then we all meet on the roof. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> and then all our stuff. friends. Yeah. And, and I think Our friends you need... have a rooftop, by the way, Nancy and Gorov. Shout out to them. But everyone meets on their roof. And me and Aditya stopped attending because it was the same people. Well, also, you, me, and Hot Friend Sheets, there was a party where we were the only single people there. And then we ate cupcakes and sat in the bedroom. Yeah. We sat on their bed, did not know it was their bedroom. And it was <laughs> depressing because we were the only single people at this event and it tends to be married couples and so we stopped attending however they're great and you're not going to meet anyone new on their rooftop though <laughs> yeah and that's the thing is i'm what i'm trying to do is expand my social network which i already have a big social network but so much of the network is married people or whatever and this kind of ties into what i was saying earlier where like you know anisha was saying i was at some wedding so after the spring, I was kind of like, we potted. I was a little down in the dumps and I was like about to head to the, this big trip that I was doing, which was like a combination of work in London, work in Asia and two weddings in Italy. And so at both of these weddings, so one was a, a, a group of New York people that all of our New York friends went there. And then one was like a reunion of all of my like Hong Kong friends, which is mostly Indian people. And so the difference between these two weddings was that you know, the the New York group, everyone sees each other as more of like, not a reunion, but like, oh, you know, this is people that used to hang out every weekend, but now it's once every two months and like there's a baby involved and, you know, maybe we'll go to a bar and watch a sports game with the baby or someone's apartment for a board game night. And then the other group was people who've been married for a while and we only see each other at weddings every two years, every three years. Uh, and that was the one where I was getting the questions of like, oh, like, so there's 20 people in the group and 17 are married. Like I, you know, when is your turn? You know, how were these weddings in Italy? Where in Italy? I want deets. So the, the, the Hong Kong friend group, it was an Indian slash white wedding in Siena, which is about 45 minutes from Florence. I've been San Gimignano. It's near yes. There. Yes, absolutely. And then from there I took, uh, I took the, it was over the weekend, Memorial day weekend. And from there I took the train to, the Amalfi Coast, so I did Positano um, and Sorrento with a couple of friends for the second wedding. And the second wedding was just outside Rome. Um, and I will say that the Amalfi Coast was, it was nice to be with a couple single friends and we chilled out, but it was packed. It was hot. It was tourists. It was all Americans, by the way. Like everyone spoke in, you know, English and it was uh, definitely a lot of honeymooners. You know, I, I know that's uh, a thing that people do. Um, but, you know, we always say you don't need a partner to travel to cool places. So you it, was nice to go with, it was nice to go with friends. We're also I, I got a few DMs from people, you know, regarding my travels to Asia with my husband. And people were DMing me, oh, I feel so far behind looking at your photos. And... I knew right away these people look 12, first of all. So I replied Ooh. to a few of them, like, how old are you? And they're like, 31. I'm like, oh, go to hell. Oh, go my to hell. God. <laughs> you know, I, I can't relate. As someone that waited to find the right person and got married, finally living some sort of marital life with someone that, you know, is worth my time and I'm worth their time. But... I traveled alone for so long. No. I went to China alone with nobody for three weeks. Like I've done all of that. And that's you did, you did your time. You did. I did my time, but I also never looked at other couples and thought, when will it be my turn? I enjoyed my time and I knew my time would come. The only thing I always looked at other people at 
which is this is really shitty of me to say if like I'm going to get canceled. I don't care if someone was really ugly and they were married to like someone good looking. And I was like, what am I doing wrong? We've all been there. Or we're awful people. And I was like, when will my turn come? That was the only time where I was like really annoyed. I was like, what is going on here? What am I doing wrong? But, you know, when when it's your time, yeah, it's you, your time. And you guys, you know, I think you've done all the stuff that you've wanted to um, or that he hasn't been able to. You've done an Africa trip. You did uh, Iceland, I remember. Uh, we're and doing, just we're now, doing you did, everything. You did. But, but the truth is, I did all these places, most of them already. So going back to what you were saying about the Amalfi Coast being full, I went to the Amalfi Coast many years ago, and then I, I went again with my husband, and it was packed. And the same thing happened just now with Japan and Korea. I went with my mom in 2012. We couldn't get half the food places off our list that we normally would have because of the crowds. Instagram is ruining travel because everyone's <laughs> traveling everywhere now. Well, you know what's annoying is that I thought that everyone was just going to Europe in June, July, August, right? We've all seen the Instagram like, oh, this is the, the memes. Like, oh, this is the month where how does this person afford Europe month? Um, so we always said go in like mid to late May and September, right? So but now people are doing that too. It's like, come on, you know? Well, found the tricks. They're going in May and they're going in September because I went to the Amalfi Coast in September and we couldn't even walk in Positano. We left. Well, the good the good thing is that Positano uh, and Sorrento, they're, you know, obviously we ate a lot of gelato and pizza and pasta, but so much walking. Like my oh, yeah. step count was wild. And even the days that I had a low step count, it's the steps, like up up the stairs. I think I had like 5,000 steps, but like burned 600 calories. That It was crazy. You know? Yeah, you'll definitely get your walking done on, in Asia and in Europe. Uh, a lot of people don't know you lived in Hong Kong. I did, yeah. That was uh, when I was in my mid to late 20s. So I went to Hong Kong and it's changed quite a bit since COVID. But what was your time there like? You know, I would feel like that's the place to date. It's international. You'd meet so many people. Honestly, uh, I was actually just talking about it with a bunch of my friends from Hong Kong. And it's like dating there was weird. So when I moved there, it was in 2013 and Tinder had just come out. I remember I'd used it briefly in New York and it was, uh, you know, it was interesting. You, you know, you'd go out and there, a lot of times you'd see people you knew. And I think Bumble and Hinge didn't come out until 14 or 15. So the, it was an interesting period. And I remember in Hong Kong, I got Tinder and I was one of like 10 people. Like I swiped for like two minutes and everyone was gone. Um, and this, and I think I maybe dated one or two people from Tinder there. And otherwise you would just go out with friends and going on a date was weird. I remember once I told my friends like, yeah, I have a date Friday night. And this was when we were 27. I was like, why? And they were like, it was kind of, I was shamed for going on dates back then. And all those people are married now. <laughs> They probably got arranged or something. Yeah. No, some of them actually met organically. I mean, there's a lot of like interracial too, um, brown and white. Or, But in general, it was uh, very much a culture of like a hookup culture. It was like you go out in this one area, which apparently isn't even cool anymore. It's called Long Quai Fong. It's like sort of like Bourbon Street. And it's all the expats go out there, a bunch of bars. And then you take the elevator up and there's a street called Wyndham Street where there's more bars. And then there was one particular club called Dragon Eye, which was all Indian people. And we went two, three times in that, a week, um, every week. And you just go there and, you know, either you party your friends, maybe you make out with someone, maybe you meet someone. It was, it was, I, it's hard to describe that life. And we always look back on it very fondly. Um, but I think you said there's now different parts of Hong Kong people. Yeah, yeah there, it's changed because of COVID, but I also wanted to point out uh, our other friend, Neil, in the chat, he was like, you guys keep talking about how you're old. I'm not old. And I'm like, I am the last person to call any of us old. I'm young at heart. But I will say in these travels, even in these travels, and I think I'm young, I find all the people on vacation around me to be in their early 20s as well. These backpackers, you know, these 
hostel staying kids. And it's like, you just feel old and travel makes you feel older. And when I came back this trip, I didn't mention this to you guys earlier. I actually had a panic attack coming back home, um, turning 40 in two months. And I just felt like, wow, my life is so short. Like I want to see so much more, you know, we've, we've traveled, we've been privileged enough to have traveled quite a bit, but there's still so much I want to see. And I came back really emo. I was really just sad that my life is just like here, like meaning well, I think alone. The, the reality is you and your husband both work very hard. And I think you guys need to make more time for travel and each other and personal time. And, you know, that's the problem with two workaholics. They forget with each other. That's my two cents. Maybe. No, you're right. I think the, you guys work maybe like this craziness for a couple of years. But at some point you need to like spend time enjoying life. Yeah, because these are our best years, you know, but 40s, people are like 50s. I'm like, no, you want to be at home chilling when you're 50. The reality is our best years were spent in in lockdown or single, right? (laughs) Literally. and Or dating the wrong people. (laughs) Dating the wrong people, wasting time. And in my case, I'm, I've said it before, I regret spending five years single uh, thinking, someone was going to fall from the sky that didn't happen yeah you got to make it happen i feel like a lot of our friends and people we know in new york like they don't really they always say anisha you're so lucky and it's like no there's hard work it's kind of like you know you see someone with a six-pack or someone who runs a marathon or gets that job or gets into that grad school like there's no luck like all of that is like hard work so finding a partner is the same Absolutely. And I saw something that Will Smith said earlier this week because Bad Boys came out this week and he said his son told him and his son's a B student that I'm going to get A's. And he was like, no, you're not, because his son was under the impression that going from a C to a B is the same as going from B to A. And he's like, no, a B to an A is exceptional work, you know, like you are further than anyone else whereas going from a c to a b you're doing okay yeah that's a great point it's like you're going you're you're basically just doing you went from doing the bare minimum to being average right versus to go from average to exceptional is a lot more difficult and so it's like how much are you putting into this we have our friends who are complaining that they can't find anyone yet they're not doing anything about it. They're just saying they can't find anyone, but nothing's being done. Right. Like if you're not going on a certain number of dates or putting yourself out there, um, or like, let's say you're event driven, like go to these events and like ask for introductions or, you know, flirt with someone or, you know, you need to, you can't just go to events and take photos and put up Instagram shots and then do nothing else, you know? And we're only mentioning this because people who listen to the pod, a lot of people are single and in their late 30s. And we have a few Gen Z listeners too, who can't find anyone. And to those listeners, I'm saying you're too young, like chill, enjoy your life. Like, no offense, we don't care. We don't care, <laughs> calm down. But if you're all for being independent and not needing a man, that's great too, okay? I was there and I've been that person and I still hate men. And we've talked about this. There's definitely a double standard where I can say I hate men. Whereas if you said you hate women who are behaving the same way as the men I hate, then you're canceled. <laughs> That's so true, actually. I have to like hold my tongue. I feel like I've said certain things and you'd be like, well, we can't hear this. Exactly. So right now, Where are you at mentally? I'm just like having fun. I'm enjoying the summer. I think I pretty much said that, you know, it's a good time to reset. And I just got back from all these travels and I'm kind of just exhausted. Um, Focused on work, friends. You know, I have another set of travels towards the end of the summer. I have going to the Olympics with my family and in Paris. And then I'm going for another wedding in south of France a month later or so. I don't even think I want to consider being in a relationship until the fall, you know, cupping season again. I feel like I've had a girlfriend like four of the last six falls. So let's, let's make it five out of seven. Love that. Love that for you. I'm so excited for you in the Olympics. I 
get obsessed with the Olympics. Of course you have. <laughs> it's like so random. Do you have a sport that you love, like swimming, track, gymnastics? Like, is there anything? I think swimming is probably the most interesting. Uh, but that's because of like the whole Michael Phelps in Beijing thing. Yeah. Um, but I don't know any of the you can you not like clean your room while doing the podcast or whatever's happening? Like we can't hear you. Oh, sorry. By the way, guys, he's like running around his room, like organizing. I'm like, we're recording. I can't hear you. <laughs> it's trying to multitask. <laughs> um, yeah. Sorry. Uh, I, I would didn't say hear, we didn't hear you. Can you can you hear me now? Yeah. Uh, yeah. So I don't know. I'd say swimming, and then everything else is kind of secondary but i'm just you know i'm going with my boomer parents who enjoy that type of stuff and i told them it's going to be hot it's going to be crowded so they'll see but you know for them they're in their 60s and 70s so they're like oh we only have so much time left so we want to keep living life to the fullest you know hey my parents are going to croatia i'm like whoa they're going to croatia and prague and I, I don't know. I worry about them now when they go on these trips. I feel like they should just be staying home. <laughs> um, I just also wonder, like, aren't those places for younger people? Like Dubrovnik and all that? Yeah, but if you've never seen them. They've never been. Oh, never been. I've never been to Croatia. That me. Oh, my God. That'd be uh, I think that's like a spot I want to go next summer. Like because uh, I've done enough Europe this summer for like weddings and pre-planned things like next summer i would like to do like croatia and like i've never been to portugal so those are classic places that are going to be already super crowded and overrun and then speaking of olympics and sports now can you explain cricket and everything that's happening in cricket i'm seeing a lot of memes and i don't know what's going on okay so the cricket world cup um is happening in the US right now, but it's not the main version of cricket. So cricket has a few versions. One is uh five day, which is like the boring, it's called test match. And that's the one that like our dads will like sit and just watch cricket for five days. And ultimately it's usually a draw and they call that pure cricket. Then there's one day cricket, which is like one team bats in the morning, one's in the evening or the afternoon rather. And that's um, 50 overs basically. And an over it, it cricket is not time bound. It's like, number of pitches so six pitches make it over so 50 overs per team that's one day cricket um this version that's in the u.s they made one called t20 which is 20 overs so that turns out to be like three to four hours max which is like much easier for like you know the american crowd to watch so there's uh it's been a lot in the news uh because people didn't know that the usa has a team uh they do have a team and, I did not know that. Yeah. And so first it started where USA beat Pakistan, um, which was wild because it's like Pakistan's like a top three team and USA, no one knew that team. Yeah. And then India, Pakistan played a few days later, which was like crazy. Like everyone was at that game. A bunch of your friends, our friends um, attended that. And that was one of the hardest tickets to get because I was also in uh west Ch or i don't even know where it was but like long island it was like 45 minutes from the city and then i went with a friend to india versus usa which was a really fun game as well um and then that was one where the u.s actually did quite well and then the india came back to win because they are the tournament favorites and then uh india and the u.s actually both advanced from the group stage and pakistan was in the same group and they didn't so that was interesting and I feel like a, the, the interesting thing is that the U.S. team is made up of a lot of Indian, ex-Indian people on visas and, you know, some a couple uh, Pakistani guys, I think, as well. But, like, mostly Indian and, like, a couple, like, American, like, white guys, black guys. <laughs> it's, like, kind of funny. Okay. So that's, that's a quick recap of that sport. And is it still happening or is the T20 done? No, it's still happening. Um it's the group stage is done. I think the knockout stage is coming up and I think the tournament runs through July. I want to say um, sort of at the same, I know the euros are happening as well. So I think those tournaments are around the same time and those wrap up before the Olympics. So that's the sports update there. <laughs> is there any T20 
team that we should be looking out for in these last few weeks of the tournament? Probably India, right? I mean, I'm sure a lot of the... still in it? India still doing well? India India and the U.S. advanced. So both those teams should be monitored. Uh, India is the favorite. And I'd say those that's worth monitoring to any of the listeners who are brown or not brown because we're not you know, brown. if you just want to be in this cricket world and learn about it go ahead and follow the t20 yeah it's uh, and it's, on, it's on i think at um pretty reasonable hours it's like afternoons and early evening and i think uh i think once the um american sports wrap up i know nba just finished and then the hockey is almost done i think then they move to like prime time so it's not going up against those okay so yeah and then we just have the nba championships and the celtics won the celtics won and then the florida team is actually in the finals for hockey so they're up three to two right now the panthers the panthers <laughs> you should I, know this about it in your group i don't group know show. anyone who watches hockey except you julio he's a panthers fan and then uh we have uh neil and probably my him. brother who knows about all the sports yeah, I don't know. I like I don't know anyone who talks about hockey. Interesting. Okay. Well, it's it is the fourth sport I'd say in the U.S. and maybe soccer is kind of catching up to it. But you know, they do have a really cool championship trophy called the Stanley Cup. Not well, that's to- what I was confused. My husband was trying to explain it to me, and I was like, I thought that was Canada. It so I, I'd say ten teams or eight teams are from Canada, and it's a Canadian sport. And one of the teams in the finals is from Edmonton, but. Um, I would say that they have the coolest championship trophy. Everyone should Google the Stanley Cup, not to be confused with this, which is Stanley, Stanley Cup Stanley. that's going viral on <laughs> Instagram. Not that Stanley Cup, guys. Which, by the way, has lead in it, apparently. Oh, uh, don't don't ruin that for me. Come on. <laughs> oh, it's a good present for any guy who's listening. I got that from my ex girlfriend. That I got the present. Okay. Yes, and I thought that was a premature gift as well, and I told you not to give that, but you did anyway, so whatever. I don't regret anything about that, you know? Um, I tried my best, and I think that it was around her birthday, and it just happened to be a month into dating, and I had known her for some time, and she's a wonderful person, and I hope she's doing well. That's very sweet of you. Um, I, I did think she was a wonderful person as well, so... That's all I have to say on that. Yeah, sometimes, sometimes it's not the right fit, you know, and that's what sucks about dating. And timing. But I think what this has led me to is just I'm like so cyn- I'm so cynical. I'm just kind of like I'll date, but I truly don't care what happens. And like if I break up, it's like yeah, you know, it happens. <laughs> I don't think you should be cynical either. I think you should know what you want and know that it's already yours. And I think the one thing I decided is that I will not be exclusive with someone until it's like. I, I fully trust them. And it's like, maybe like going exclusive with someone one month in or whatever is, doesn't make sense. Like maybe you go exclusive after like three to six months. Yeah, I agree. A year. <laughs> a year. A year is a little much. <laughs> maybe three months. Three months. No, I've done three months. I think closer to six. And it's, it, it helps, especially in the summer because everyone's traveling so much. And, you know, let's say this girl I'm seeing in San Francisco where, you know, even if I see her over three months, that won't be enough time to even be exclusive because like you're, you know, you're only seeing each other once a month or whatever it is. So maybe, maybe long distance is the way because then over six months you can figure it out and then see if it's worth compatibility. Yeah. And uh, speaking of what's happening in the news, the most embarrassing millennial on the planet right now, Justin mm-hmm. Timberlake. Gross. I mean, the memes are really, really good. That's all I will say. I love, we love a good meme. And well, there's so many good. For the people that don't know, Justin Timberlake was arrested in New York, was it? Probably. Um, it was in the Hamptons, actually. The Hamptons Harbor. for driving intoxicated. Driving while intoxicated. I had never heard of DWI. What's the difference between DWI and DUI? I know driving driving under. under the influence and driving while intoxicated. Which is worse? I would say driving while intoxicated. Okay, under the influence might be like you had one or two drinks, right? Yeah, and this just happened on June eighteenth, and he was pulled over in Sag Harbor, and during the traffic stop, he exhibited signs of impairment, and then he was arrested, and his blood alcohol concentration was above the legal limit 
And then they also found prescription medication of Truvada. I don't know what that is. Truvada okay. and Molly. Wait, what? Oh, wow. Okay. That, um, I was going to say, it's one, thing, it's one thing if you had like a glass of wine and there was some prescription meds and there was like an accident or whatever, like maybe devil's advocate that, but like when you're throwing in fun drugs, like, you know, we, we've all done some fun stuff and we would never get behind the wheel of a car. Like I, I even have friends who like will smoke weed and then drive. I'm like, what is wrong with you? Like, I'm maybe that's cause I'm not a driver when I'm sober at all. Like I live in New York and I haven't driven a car in ages, but like the people that do this are just so irresponsible, I think. Well, I don't know why they're saying Truvada because now they're saying despite what despite what you may have read, he didn't have Hoppers, Molly, or Truvada in his system, which I don't know. Why would they mention that? And then is this like Truvada's, a attraction? It's an weird. HIV drug. Yeah, I just looked it up. It's an HIV drug or to prevent HIV. Like, I don't understand what's going on. <laughs> but they're saying now that it's not the case. But who knows if it's a cover up? We don't know anything anymore. Well, I, I think the best part about this, did you see that the cop that arrested him was like 18 or something and didn't know who he was because Gen Z. Because I think Timberlake is a millennial person and Gen Z doesn't know who he is. But it's like as if the millennials were already embarrassing enough because I don't consider us to be in that millennial category. It's like the millennials that do the corporate speak and say things like circle back and don't know what's happening in the world. Like we are not those millennials. Um, and now you have Justin Timberlake. Like he was our mascot and now he's kind of I don't know if he was our mascot. I think that some people may have, but I think we had better choices. Yeah, he wasn't ours, but a lot of people like NSYNC and Justin Timberlake in the millennial. So, I would say that there's growing up, it was always Backstreet Boys versus NSYNC. And I think the reason NSYNC did it a little bit better for some is that JT was there, right? And, you know, fair enough. And they made amazing music videos. But... I think depending on how you feel about Britney, you know, her book came out in the fall. And I remember reading that and being like, wow, like you enjoyed the book. I liked the book. I read it in like a day and I just felt like you see what's happening with Britney and her mental health on social media and the conservatorship or whatever's been going on. And I'm sure like, I think Justin contributed to a lot of that. There was, he might be the original gaslighter, right? Our favorite word. Oh yeah. Cry me a fucking river. A great song, to be fair. Great <laughs> song, but like ultimate gaslighter. And I think she even said she had an abortion. Oh, yeah, that's right. I will Which say, if you want to have a good time, go to Crimea River and then on YouTube and then go scroll to the comments. And it's just so much JT bashing. It's great. Good. Appropriately. He deserves it. And then his wife has been babbling in all these articles about how he needs to be focused on tour and that's why he's been away from the family because he can't be distracted. Meanwhile, you see this arrest now and she just looks like a clown. Let's be clear. Jessica Biel is amazing. She's a wonderful person. She deserves better than this scumbag. And I'm just going to go out and say he 100% has cheated on her because he's an ass. He has and I think she's stayed. She's decided to stay and ignore it all and that's fine. It's her choice. Yeah. But he's... But, you know, I think it's one thing to cheat and it's one thing to do all these things like, okay, fine. You have moral, moral codes. I think getting behind the wheel of a car when you're drunk or on Molly or whatever it is, you're the worst person ever. Like in my mind, you're not far off from, you know, someone who attempted murder. It's like, agreed. Really agreed. Driving drugs. Also, not to say that different classes of people should be allowed to do that, but like, you know, if you're poor, I kind of understand like, you know, maybe you can't afford a cab or whatever you are worth, hundreds of millions of dollars you can order any uber any car service any chauffeur and if you you basically think you're above the law he should get more than the average person in jail i think he should be prosecuted to the full extent of the law but he won't because this country is obsessed with you know Celebrity. celebrities and i wish they could make an example of him but they won't because our justice system is beyond broken um and i wish nothing but pain and the worst for him he's a terrible person and I used to love this book. So. I used to as well. And it's depressing. And he's embarrassing for all of us. Yeah. he's And look, 
this isn't the first time like we all have people who we enjoy their work their music their literature you know and then they've done something wrong like a lot of people like we loved harry potter a lot of people love jk rowling but she says some things that were inflammatory and then it's like you have to take the product away from the person you know and like separate yeah yeah so in this like, case i can enjoy it. i can enjoy and sing but like this guy can go to hell and um i personally think that he should never be able to get behind the wheel of a car ever again and he should serve jail time but that's me that's what a fair system would look like we've seen it with celebrities athletes they get away with whatever they want they get away with domestic abuse uh they get away with drunk driving right. crimes rape all of it um and that's just gonna keep happening but at least everyone knows about it and i think this man may be blackballed from hollywood what do you think i think he will be blackballed i think he already kind of is and if he's doing this now imagine how many times he's done it he really didn't give a shit well what's gonna happen is the usual nonsense of like oh i'm an alcoholic i'm going to rehab like yeah you know all this all this nonsense like no you don't have a problem a mental disorder you chose to do this because you're a selfish asshole. Yeah, you think you're above the law, like you said, because you have all the resources to hire a driver, get an Uber. It's not hard in his position. It's, it's an ego thing. And it's the same thing that I know that happened You know, with a lot of um, people I knew in Bombay and Delhi. They were like, oh, I'm rich. You know, My dad can pay off the cops, whatever. And it's like, meanwhile, you're putting other people's lives at risk. And to I mean, anyone who says... Well, Sorry, go ahead. No, you go ahead. I said to anyone who's like, oh, you know, self-driving cars are scary. I was in San Francisco. I saw a bunch of them. That ain't, that ain't scary to me. Bring on the technology. What scares me is idiot people behind the wheel of a car. It's so dangerous. And then idiot intoxicated people behind the wheel of a car, the worst. I jam, love self, literal jam. I love self-driving cars and I live in Phoenix at the moment. So I get to use those. And any day I'd take one over a human. But I think he's going to get canceled, but he's going to do exactly what you said. Go to rehab, make the apology, be a better father, husband, all the nonsense. Uh, it's a shame. I hope. I mean, what's annoying is like, I want people to go on and boo him at concerts and on tour. But then that means you have to buy tickets and give him the money for that. But that would be kind of funny where everyone or, just turns on. Or on the flip side, this fucker comes out now with an album and it's his like comeback you know that that happens too it's really pathetic people do love a comeback but i just think he has too many strikes against him you know it's like the britney stuff and i think so many people prefer britney to him and i think britney is like the true millennial like queen right like we don't know what's again, happening with her though we don't know anything before taylor swift came along like britney was our queen right you know? yeah so I, I don't know where she is, though, or what she's doing. I don't believe anything on the internet. I think it might not even be her. We don't know. I know. But wh whatever's happening with her, we all love her. Everyone loves Britney. Everyone's read the book. And she's fantastic and super talented. And this man was horrible to her. And I know for, you know, it's, well, there are three sides to every story, his side, her side, the truth. And it's like, I just don't believe this man. I think he's a scumbag. And... I hope most of the listeners, I know that a lot of times uh, they don't agree with me on things. I hope uh, they agree with me on this one. <laughs> They'll agree with you and I agree with you. And uh, yeah, another weird thing that happened before we sign off. I posted about the election coming up and how in 2016 I gained like 20 pounds because I was so depressed when Trump won and I was just eating oh. naan and butter chicken for six months straight. Because food is my. I wish food. I was partying with you. That sounds really fun. Yeah, it was fun, but I also gained like twenty pounds. But and I was in the city, so we would have, you know, hung out, but we didn't know each other then. Yeah. But, but um, basically, a lot of weird DMs saying vote for RFK, and that left me shook. Like people are voting for RFK. I was like, okay. I mean. Third party never works. I mean, RFK also has like a worm eating his brain. Like a wasted vote. I mean, none of our votes really really matter. I guess you're in Arizona, so your vote actually does matter. So. But I don't vote in Arizona. I'm Florida, and I'll be back in Florida in two months. Florida, thank God. Florida, which is the most red state now. It's like, oh, yeah, remember when Florida was a swing state? Good times. <laughs> times. But, um, yeah, I thought that was strange, and looking forward to all of that as well. And... 
I can't wait for your Olympic stories. Yeah, it'll be interesting. Um, I, I I just hope it's not too hot because our biggest fear is the sun and then Europe in the sun. It's just, it's too much. Well, yeah, yeah. People who are going to Europe right now, don't do it. Go in the shoulder season. Apparently the shoulder season's ruined as well now, but is, we is all the know shoulder season? when you go like May or oh, September. May, September. Yeah. Yeah, that's true, actually. Oh, yeah. But um, the other thing is like brown people, like we just, are we scared of the sun? Do we not like it? Because like all, all, we go on vacation with white people, all they want to do is sit in the sun. So I obviously growing up was told not to go in the sun because I'd get darker, but that's not why I don't go in the sun. I don't go in the sun because A, I don't want to age and I don't know if it's me. I actually feel hot, like faster than maybe white people. That's what I've noticed. Like I actually feel my body roasting and my scalp, like I get really hot. I can't be hot. Yeah. And then I feel like um, we burn a lot easier, even with SPF. Yeah. 150 or whatever. It doesn't matter, you know? Yeah. I, I prefer, like, I like the pool and like, a, and, like, a cabana by the pool. And then if I'm on the beach, I want a cabana covered, whatever, but I'm not going in the water. I'm not going in the water if it's not clear. And 90% of the time, it's not clear because I'm scared of the animals. <laughs> I mean, you would like lakes. I'm a fan of a lake. Oh, my God. I'm from Florida. There'd be alligators in the lake. Oh, my God. I would never put my toe in a lake. I was thinking like the Great Lakes, like, you know, Midwest. I'd be too scared to me. That's like the fucking ocean. Oh, my God. Wow. The lake I... that big where you don't see the end. So when you and your husband ever go to a beach resort or do you ever? Go to beach well, on and my husband goes into the water. I don't. I'm terrified. And I'm always like looking out for him wow and i always tell him not to either but you know well i guess what's nice is like going at like sunset you know that's all that's feeding time oh for the dawn and dusk (laughs) that's when they eat oh i just meant being on the beach or in the sun right like you know oh i'm talking about like going in the water oh yeah, well, you and I both don't need the water. That's we don't. We don't need here. to be in the water. But yeah, absolutely. And I like they had this meme and it was so true. It was more real, actually, of where all the Asians were sitting on the beach. And it was like in strategically placed locations where the buildings were behind them providing mm. shade. I love that. And we do that in Miami. Well, that's why I'm on team pool, right? You get in the pool, you get out, you got there's no, there's no animals in there. I will do a dip in the pool. Yeah. But um, I'm glad to be back, but it was a little depressing to be back because I realized I'm aging. I don't want to feel that way, but it's the reality, you know, seeing young people on your travels, you know, backpackers, just a reminder of, you know, you're, I feel that way when I'm in New York City. I know you're born and raised in New York, but don't you feel like everyone in New York is young? Well, we talked about this in the group chat. I feel like um, I've been going out in New York since I was 18, basically. I'm 37 now and I don't really go out anymore. Like I'd say I'll go to like, you know, I'll go to a bar to watch sports. I'll do dinner. I'll do drinks. I'll do brunch, but I'm not like going out. Like only, only a few of our friends such as NKP, like enjoy going out still. Like I'll do like a birthday dinner, birthday drinks. But you know, I, most of my friends obviously have kids, but even the ones who are single, like they're in bed by midnight, you know? Yeah. And when I you don't like, out there, they're, the people are young. I don't like being the oldest person at a bar consistently. I don't either. That's why like, I love a dive bar at like 6, 7 p.m. watching a game because there's like, you know, other older people there. Like, you know, the, the, the regular guy who's like 60 or whatever. That's fine. But if I'm going out in the West Village um, to all the spots that I used to go to, it's like, it's all kiddies, right? And it's, that's okay. They're tied now, you know? And I think we're reaching an interesting time because as millennials, we've never experienced elder millennials on social media. A lot of us are turning 40 and it's like, will we stay relevant? Yeah. At least that's what I'm going to find out. Well, I think what's interesting is like COVID was sort of a two year period where like that was the transition for a lot of us. Like I was 32 before COVID and then I wouldn't. You can debate when COVID ended, but when things kind of got normal again, I was like 34, 35. 
And that's when I noticed like, oh, wow, like I'm a lot older than everyone else. You know, 32, you don't really recognize you can go to bars as a 32 year old guy and meet like a 27 year old girl. But when you're 35, it's kind of like, oh, yeah, there's some 27 year olds. And but there's mostly 22 to 25. And now I'm 37. I'm like, there's no I'm not meeting 30 year olds at the bar, or 30 plus, you know? Yeah. Yeah. It is what it yeah. is. But thanks for okay. coming on the pod. I know you're exhausted. Get some rest. Hey, well, it's also today we're recording on Juneteenth, so I slept in today. Juneteenth. I know it's like a holiday, but I'm surprised your dad has it off. I mean, that's very forward of okay. him. Progressive. I mean, it's an important holiday. I know it came out only a few years ago, but, you know, it's important to honor traditions and i think more companies should give the day off it's a federal holiday and most people don't know about it so that's you know it's supposed to be the end of slavery right celebrating that yeah that's it's a big deal <laughs> so yeah enjoy your juneteenth i guess i i will probably just be watching tv and vegging out <laughs> thanks for coming on all right talk to you soon bye